Yeah, it's great to be back. Uh, you know, this is one of the few events that gets, you know, attracts uh, a wide range of things, including real data people, people with interest in data, practitioners, investors, business folks that care about data. It's really a great, a great audience. Very, very happy and proud to be back. So, <clears throat> um, my background, I, I started a database company out of Stanford too long ago, uh, and then I started Action IQ after I did that. And the reason why I started Action IQ is because I wanted to do something that's a little bit more focused on the business user and the customer data. My observation was that most of the data that matters is really customer data. And at the end of the day, everything we do, even if you think about the two previous presentations, we're trying to enable the business user, right? And the business user doesn't like to write SQL or code or anything like that. And you know, there are all kinds of different approaches to try to get them. Uh, but my passion specifically is around the customer experience. How do we help the business drive better customer experience? Now, the thing about data experience is that the way it's been done traditionally is it involves a lot of work. Uh, personalization at scale means you have to create and manage thousands of segments or audiences. Um, there's a huge number of customer touch points. We used to have email and a website, right? Now you have everything from like a lot of social networks, call centers, in-store experiences and systems. It's really expanding every day. And the event data is the key, right? Behavior is key to great personalization, and that makes things very big, right? It's a lot of data you have to manage. The way this problem is solved in most enterprises is that you deploy armies of analysts, and they get tickets and requests, and they write SQL, right? which is true about for most things, but it's specifically true about driving campaigns. So that's how the CDP was created uh, as a category and as a space, and it's been around for a few years, and as Matt said, it's really getting heating up, and I'll talk about it the past year. But you can think of the CDP as BI, but for customer experience, or BI for campaigns. It's not just about insights, it's about sending data to a lot of the activation systems, right? So there's an element of activation that's different from BI. Um, the other thing that's different is that BI generally gives you insights. The CDB has to give you very specific things like audiences or journeys that help you execute customer experience things like marketing campaigns or different sequences of personalization. But generally speaking, you can think of the CDB as sitting in between the data and then all the customers or the systems that activate the customer. So Action IQ, uh, proudly based in New York City, um, we have many great enterprise customers that were very humbled and proud to call our customers. Um, many of them do customer experience stuff at scale. Many of them are trying to take personalization to the next level. Um, and, you know, Matt was first investor. Uh, we have some other great investors uh, that we have acquired since then. Um, in general, we drive things like much lower acquisition cost or much higher retention. These are the business things we're doing, as you can see there from our Bloomberg Media um, case study. So um, I want to talk about why the previous iteration of the space failed and what the new evolution of the space is. Uh, CDPs failed in the previous incarnation for a few different reasons. The main one is that they didn't integrate into the data stack very well. In some ways, the CDP was a system that the business would buy traditionally, and it would seem to compete with the customer 360 approaches that IT or engineering would drive. Now, CDP and Customer 360 are very different, right? CDP, at the end of the day, the goal is to service the business user and have a UI for the business user. Customer 360 is a data lake with customer data. In some ways, the CDP needs a good Customer 360. However, if you take the term CDP, Customer Data Platform, it sounds like a Customer 360 project. So that created a lot of confusion um, and a lot of friction in some cases between what was happening in-house and what the CDP was trying to do. Um, many CDPs, many vendors call themselves a CDP and they were really more point solutions that didn't have enterprise scale. And in general, 
people would call any, any vendor that had some customer data would call themselves a CDP. Having any customer data was a license to kill, meaning a license to call yourself a CDP. That created a lot of confusion. I think all of these were real challenges. Um, and at the same time, um, even though while this challenge was happening, the problem that the CDP would solve became even more important. You still needed to give the business access to customer data in the way that sells service. Uh, cookies going away means that now the CDP not only does retention or post acquisition, but also replaces the DMP. And you know the explosion of customer channels means complexity, more data, more channels means complexity just went up and up and up. So the new thing in the CDP space is what's called the composable CDP. And you may have heard the term composable in the context of the data stack, but what composable means is instead of having one thing that does everything, now you have a CDP that can plug into a broader data stack. So what is a composable CDP? Um, it, a composable CDP is a CDP that can satisfy three very specific things. First of all, it's a CDP that doesn't need to move data in order to work. You can store the data, execute on the data where the data lives. If the data lives in Snowflake, that's where you execute the CDP queries or processing. If it lives in Active, that's where you do it. If it lives in BigQuery, you do it in BigQuery, wherever it may be. Um, the second thing it had, it has to be no code. You need to be able to do everything through a UI meaning you don't need to write any SQL, and you don't need to understand the semantics of the data, which is also very important and a big problem. And the third thing is warehouse agnostic, right? As I said, wherever, it, it shouldn't be specific to a specific system. In fact, it can even support multiple different systems or uh, databases that may have the data at the same time. So zero copy, no code, and warehouse agnostic is what defines specifically a composable CDP. Now, what is the opposite of composable is bundled. So CDPs used to be bundled. What does bundled mean? It means that it's a system that copies data from the source, combines data inside the CDP box. So the CDP provides the storage and the processing in addition to the user interface and all the integration with the activation systems. And essentially, this is like a cache of the data, but it's essentially a data copy. Composable means that you can leave the data here, and then what does the CDP do? It has a UI, has the integrations to the activation systems, of course, but specifically to the data. It can hold metadata. It can hold the layer of abstraction if you need to essentially have a semantic layer to make the data more digestible to the business. But all the storage and all the processing happens down in the warehouse. And with Action IQ specifically, uh, which is not only a composable CDP, it, we also offer a hybrid approach. What this means is that you may have most of your data in the data lake, but not everything. In which case, you want to execute as much as you can in Snowflake, but you may want to combine data from other sources. And there are different cases where you may want a bundled or a composable or a hybrid. Band, it really depends on the maturity of your customer data stack. If your customer data stack is not very mature yet, you don't have all the data well modeled, well integrated in one place, bundled is going to give you a lot of speed. You're going to be up and running very quickly, and it can help you combine data. If you have a fantastic customer 360 project in your data lake, all the data is there, it's appropriately modeled and formatted, it's ready for the business to, be, to use, then the composable gives you a very quick, you can drop it, you get an interface to all that customer data, you have all the integration with the activation systems, you have all the governance in the CDP, you can open it up to business, you can be up and running very quickly. And then for many enterprises, a combination may make sense. So you may have most of the data in the data lake, but not everything. So a hybrid approach uh, can be best. And this is a little bit of a, if you double click, how does this whole thing work? So you have essentially this box on the top. Um, you can think of it as the action IQ box. You have a semantic layer that we call attribute. Think of this as a view on the data. 
that's built for the business. Um, you have the local data, and then you have the views into the data lake. And depending on what the business wants to use, the CDP will decide if it needs to push queries down into the data lake, execute locally on the data, or do a combination of the two. So essentially, you get a federation of data with the business UI specifically for customer experience operations. Um, so this is the modern data stack with a focus on the customer. Um, clearly, you have a lot of systems that help with collecting data, pushing data, modeling the data, and a lot of it revolves around the data lake or the data warehouse, whether it's a Snowflake, Redshift, Databricks. Um, and essentially, what you're getting here in the middle is a customer data activation layer, which acts as a bridge to the business user, allows the business to be self-service, allows the business to be much more productive, much faster. And you can do audiencing, which essentially is a form of segmentation. You can do orchestration, which essentially is journeys, uh, laying out a path that may take days or weeks or months for the customer to traverse. And then you get real time as well. And again, this is not generic infrastructure, right? You're not trying to replace Snowflake. You're not trying to replace real time. But it's specifically to drive customer experience, marketing campaigns, or anything else you may want to do around that. And then you have a, you know, probably hundreds of systems that do activation. And Action IQ will integrate with them and will push data to them on a just-in-time basis. So as soon as one of the system needs to do something with a customer, Action IQ will push the data right in time with the latest, freshest data and drive that activation. If it's real time, obviously, it's an ongoing thing. If it's batch or micro batch, then it will, the data will ship at the right time. Um, but without this, if you don't have this, then what you really have is a bunch of people doing work in the middle, which is clearly not ideal. And with a composable CDP, you can drop uh, the CDP there, you can drop Action IQ. It plugs where the data is. It plugs all the activation systems. And you can be up and running very, very quickly. So the biggest difference between a composable and a bundle is the composable, if you have the data stack ready to go, it's a super quick, super easy deployment. You can be up and running, and you can reuse all your existing infrastructure investments. So. Um, if you take a look at the Action IQ capabilities, we call our platform the CX Hub, uh, because essentially it allows you to do all the CX operations um, without going into every one of these box. Um, you can do all kinds of different things, from audiencing, reverse ETL, identity resolution, real-time journeys, uh, and then different types of intelligence that assist um, the CX operations. Um, all of it is built to be accessible to the business and to plug into your data stack. So I would say at this point, you know, Action IQ as a company, we, we've gone really, really far. Um, we have some fantastic customers. Uh, the technology is built out. But now the real fun begins because with Composable, you get much higher velocity. Um, and then everything that made the CDPs important in the past is only getting bigger. CX is only going to be more important. You're only going to have more data, more data sources, more channels, and more complex customer journeys to manage and optimize. And um, we're very excited about this new phase of the market uh, and where this is going. So with 29 seconds left, I think I'm done. <laughs> so thank you all for your time. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you, Matt, for having me again. Impressive timing, great, uh, wonderful. All right, question there. Great to see you, hey, Tasso. Good to see you again. Oh, this is a, quite a long way. Did I see you here previously during the Astro Data Days? I think so. Yeah, and I think so. And it's an interesting sort of like connection from your days there, where you came up with NPath, which is tracking the customer journey. So. I'm um, impressed if you remember. It's been a while. Oh, man. I, I lost a few years because of that. <laughs> anyway, um, question I have here is it looks like what you're, comp what you're putting together here is like a data fabric for a customer data platform. It's what it sounds like to me. Um, 
and you know, with the, with the idea of simple front end, don't worry about how the data gets to you. The question is, how do you pull something like this off without a lot of complex integration, you know, you know, you know, you know under the hood? Thank you. Um, so we do not, do, we're not an integration platform. We don't do integrations. Um, as I said before, the more you have your data, customer data already integrated, the more you go the composable route, the less it is integrated and the more it's distributed, the more you go the bundle route. The bundle route has more integration, but the integration is more about combining data than doing massive data transformations to make them fit a different data model. That's why it's a little bit more of a federal integration model. If, um, I mean, you are familiar, but for those that are familiar with those terms, it looks more like a federation than an integration. Um, it is important, however, to have some, um, the semantic layer to make the data digestible by the business, which I spoke about the attributes. That's a very important part of the platform. But we think of it more about combining data than integrating data, is how we think about it, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I had a question just, uh, I think that the concept of the CDP is really interesting, uh, but why should it be limited to, our, to customer data? Could, it, could this work as well for like financial data or uh, like logging, like server data, stuff like that? Yeah, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day there's no real assumption in the data model that we use other than there's a customer identity, identity somewhere, right? As long as there's a customer identifier tied to the data, then the whole system works. The reason why it wouldn't work without a customer identifier is that some of the operation that the CDP enables, like segmentation, like journeys, they do assume the presence of a customer, known or anonymous, right? It can be either way um, in the mix. And it can even be a hierarchy of identities. You can have multiple identities. We have some clients that they have customers that are part of households, that are part of something bigger. Um, but the customer somewhere there is important, but what data you tie to the customer identity is completely flexible. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, Tasso, great presentation. Really enjoyed your talk today. Comment on uh, the type. Oh yeah, types of problems that you were seeing like pre-pandemic versus the types of pro business problems that you're being asked to solve in 2023, and also the industry segments that you're seeing and types of problems that are net new to you um, that customers are coming to you to solve. Yeah, it's a great question. So what's the difference between the pre-pandemic, post-pandemic business problems? So maybe the biggest thing that changed is that before um, there were many of our customers would think about the digital and the physical as two different things that had to be optimized. With COVID, this whole thing changed. The digital and physical came together. So we have a lot of, for example, customer journeys that span the digital and physical realm, right? So you can start on the website, go to store, go back to the website. We do a lot of work with, with both combining data from the physical and digital world and also creating journeys that are optimizing the digital physical experience. Uh, so that's a big one. The other big one, which is not directly related to the pandemic, is more related to what's happening around privacy, is that um, with cookies going away, there's a whole range of advertising technology that is done, right? It's like it's not, it's not good anymore. Um, if you take the DMPs as an example, DMPs, data management platforms, was what enterprise would use to manage cookies, right, and drive advertising, or, or you know, whether they were advertisers or, or publishers. All of the stuff is going away, right? The cookie data is going away. So what you're left with is first-party data that's already in the CDP. So the CDP has a big role in the advertising technology stack now that like we can drive much more efficient customer acquisition. That was definitely not the case five years ago, right? The ad tech, uh, pre-acquisition and post-acquisition technologies and journeys were completely separate. Now they've all come together and the CDP is the declared winner that's taking over those functions. So now we can have an end-to-end -end journey, man as the end-to-end -end journey from when uh, the first time an anonymous customer visits a website 
all the way to when that customer has been in your loyalty program for 10 years, right? You, you cover the whole journey with one platform, and that's extremely powerful. You can drive intelligence and actions that were not possible before. So this would be the two biggest thing I would say. Um, both very exciting. All righty then. I think that's a wrap. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, everybody.